Lemon Cupcakes writes, How do I use lacy backgrounds, like die cut sheets of repeating shapes, like stars, apples or frills? I have plenty, and I love to look at them, and I download even more to cut with my silhouette. But I don't have any idea on how to incorporate them into my pages. Glitter Girl, can you help Lemon Cupcakes love her lacy layouts? Of course I can. I'm starting with a die cut piece of pattern paper which I've cut with the silhouette with a star shaped background. If you search for star backgrounds in the silhouette store this will come up or you could design anything that you wanted to cut. Um, but I think that um, the papers that the poster originally uh, meant were some that came as a 12 by 12 sheet that were there were pre-cut but it's the same sort of design or same sort of technique just depending on whether you want to cut the paper yourself or whether you have a stash of pre-cut um, papers like this they were called cardstock lace and ki memories i think was the first to bring them out um, basic gray sometimes has them in their collections and there's been different bits and pieces um, but i didn't have any current ones in my collection right now so i've die cut this star shape with the silhouette and you can cut that design to the full 12 by 12 but i've just done it at about a seven and a half inch square so i have that ready to go and that's cut from the jelly bean soup staples the yellow polka dot the the other side is a yellow chevron and I'm going to be using some October afternoon gray with a with a cream star as my background and um, this is from Midway and it's the B side of the photo strip paper so those are my two um, starting elements and the biggest technique that I would say for using these sorts of papers and um, getting them into your album and making them look really, really lovely is to pair them with a bunch of scraps. So what I've done is started with a neutral background and then quite a bright color for the die cut and I want to introduce one more color so that basically I have a three color color scheme and that's going to be gray, yellow, and red. So I went through my scraps and just grabbed different things that were either gray, yellow, or red. And now I'm going to cut different pieces from these scraps and put them behind some of the star openings here. And I could actually go ahead and die cut more stars because these stars, I have a whole bunch of them, are the ones that come out of this design once it's cut. And so I could flip these over, for, for example, and pop them into the design. Um, but it, it it's not really necessary to die cut all of these. They don't have to be as cleanly cut because they're going to fit behind. and it, depends on the thickness of the die cut. So for example here, there are some here with really quite fine lines. If your design is more solid and the gaps are smaller, then that can be easier to um, to just cut kind of odd shapes and, and put them behind. But the basic idea is to cut these into shapes that will fit behind the window so that these spaces, some of them, or as many as you want, will be filled with color. And that introduces all those different colors into your color scheme. So I'm going to um, start penciling in so that I can just get an idea. So I'll just take this pattern, take my pencil and draw the star, and I'll probably do that on the reverse actually. And then I can just cut around with my scissors, but like I said, if you prefer not to cut with scissors, I know not everybody enjoys that sort of thing, you could just run this same pattern a few more times to the die cutter with all your different scraps of paper. So I'm going to get a few different red, gray, and yellow pieces ready so that I can fit them behind this star-shaped design. Here's my first step in embellishing that star die cut paper. I've cut um, three stars each from three different scraps of paper and just backed that and then glued the whole thing down. And now I'm going to start to, I, I, I want to add something on top. So these pieces are all behind. I want to add something over the top and give it a bit more dimension. So I'm actually going to start with some of the pieces that are the cutouts from in, inside this die cut because I can take smaller pieces and pop them into the middle of some of these pieces and with a bit of a, a pop dot here and there I can add that bit of a shadow with the different levels and I'm just duplicating, I'm, I'm putting stars on top of, of other stars so the stars that are, are flat, some of them will have an extra star on top to give that little bit of dimension. 
really really nice and simple if you wanted to make this more ornate you could add ink to all these edges but I'll be honest there are so many edges here that to me it would just be a recipe for disaster I'd probably get something a bit too messy and it would go a bit wrong now another element I thought I could add in here are the mistable star thickers so I have a few of these that I've painted in um, colors to match in a few different sizes and I misted them first with a red Mr. Huey, which has no shine, just normal red, and then a layer over the top in Gold LeMay Color Shine by Heidi Swap, and that gives it a nice golden sparkle. So you can layer those different colors. You could do a color and then um, spray the Calico Shine, which just has a pearlescent finish, and all sorts of different combinations like that. But what I'm looking for is a good match between the size of any of these pieces and the size of the die cut stars on the page so that I can just add these in and I'm just trying to kind of spread the color around and I haven't really plotted out where all the other page elements are going to go at this point but that's okay I know I only have one photo on this layout so I have a little bit more freedom for where things might go in the end Actually, I think I'll stop at three there for now. Of course, now I haven't waited long enough and I've red mist all over my fingers, but um, forgive me. Now, I have one photo that I'm going to include, and it's an old photo. It's quite small, so I think I can just include this over to the side and overlap it. I think it would look a little bit nicer with a mat to separate it from all the ornateness of these um, of the die cut stars so I'll find uh, my color to go around this and maybe maybe not the yellow or the red but maybe a different shade of gray would be a good um, combination I'll see what I can find and see if I can separate or or just make a bolder edge around that photo I had some success but I'm not completely convinced the uh, gray in the Dear Lizzie fifth and frolic collection is a darker gray and it works really well with that lighter gray but I think now the size of the photo to the size of this big embellishment is just too off balance so I need to do something to bring more attention to the side with the photo so I'm going to pull the photo back up off the page and add a vertical element in a bolder color so I've cut this strip that's about four by just shy of twelve and I'm going to adhere that and that gives me this nice neat orderly block to this side of the page which will make it a bit more dominant in the design now if you like things to be all lovely and orderly take a pattern like this and treat it like a square so line it up so that it's square onto that pattern and then you'd have a gap at the top for an, one last rectangle to fill or to leave as the plain gray but I'm just going to use it to add a little bit more um, weight to the side of the page and I think I'd actually like one more layer behind there and um, to balance this and I like to bring in a little bit of the cream if I can so I'm going to try to match that and just cut one more mat behind the photo now I'm starting to have a look that's a bit more like what I want in my album it's bringing um, more attention to the photo even though there's a lot of this ornate embellishment so I want to bring some more attention over onto this side and include some other elements I've got some red star print washi tape and I'll just use this tucked in with the photo mat so I'm going to take it underneath the gray. The two layers that I ended up adding underneath the gray, one is the reverse of the polka dot, and the other is a, it's an Amy Tangerine print from Sketchbook, which is a cream with a little black star print on top. And so I have red star washi tape there, and then I have this gray one, which is great if you want to um, use it for wrapping gifts and things this Christmas because it says with love over and over again so I just want to tear that in a spot where I get the right wording I'll do the same thing here just putting the tape underneath the gray layer and 
And then I still had some of those stars. So I can bring in that embellishment and repeat it from this side of the page. And that way I'm starting to bring in a little bit of what's on this side over to this side so I can connect everything together. I'll repeat some of those yellow stars as well. I might as well, they're already die cut from doing that larger piece. And then I'm kind of ready for a title and my journaling. I do want to make sure that I don't let the stars run the page. It's quite easy with something that's really ornate like that to just take over. So by putting my title on top of this piece that will minimize things a little bit. The trick then is to getting an alphabet that will still be legible when you've got all this in the background. So I'll pick something that's quite blocky and maybe even instead of going red it may be easiest for me to go with a gray or a black lettering because that will have higher contrast on the design that's here. When I didn't have a black or dark gray alphabet that had all the right letters in place to spell Christmas, I kind of went back to the drawing bar board and realized the other color that would really contrast here would be green and that would work fine because that would bring in a more traditional Christmas color scheme. So I spelled out Christmas with the green letters from Pebbles and small letter stickers are from Crepe Paper on Trend also in green. So now I have my title in high contrast color but it does mean that that's the only place on the layout where there's any green so I wanted to bring in a little bit more green to counteract that and um, put everything into place so I have the jelly bean soup Christmas labels and I can bring one of these green labels down to the bottom corner and that'll be a great place to write the date because I haven't included that just yet and I also wanted to finish with a little bit more of this star motif because I figure if you're going to go crazy for this many stars you might as well pile on as many stars as you have and kind of make it a real purposeful um, decision. It's not that I just have a few stars, it's that I have plenty. If you've ever seen the the, the version of Romeo and Juliet that came out in the 90s, I remember the um, the art direction being discussed by if you imagine them in a room going we don't really we just want a few candles let's not have three and and let's not have 30 let's have 300 and um if you look every scene that where they have a motif they repeat it hundreds and hundreds of times so that was kind of the the same thought i had with this with was that if i'm going to have stars. I might as well not have three stars or 30 stars. I might as have as many stars as I can pile onto the page. So I'm just taking these little wood veneer stars from Studio Calico and kind of darting them about. So I have die cut stars, wood veneer stars, thicker stars, star stars on washi tape. I have anything I had in my stash that has stars is now here on the layout. And I'll pop a couple in this corner as well to bring that whole thing across. And then my last little thing would be to bring perhaps just a tiny bit of green up here. And there's one more green sticker. So I think that will be my plan. And I will just take this one. And it's a bit um, too horizontal, too wide. So I'll cut it into some smaller pieces. So I can include it here, just going off the page. And I may need to think a little creatively here with getting all of the pieces in place. But there's enough different embellishments going on that I can tuck all the different elements underneath and then take that other end off the edge. So I'll just fill in the date and then I'll be all finished. So here's my finished page for this week and I have a choice of two challenges for you this time. So you can either go with the idea of the die cut papers, the, the cut paper design, which might be something you cut yourself with the um, silhouette or another die cutter 
or it might be a sheet of 12 by 12 die cut paper that you bought um, already cut. Either is fine. So you can go with using that or you can go with this idea of taking one motif and throwing as many of that motif at the page as you can. So you could take a star or you could take a heart or a flower or anything else and just take all the different embellishments you have with that particular motif and try to incorporate it all in one design. If you want to do both, you certainly can, but you um, don't have to to enter this week's challenge. You can do one or the other. So I hope um, you will give it a try and I'd love to see your pages in the gallery. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.